Welcome back to the channel. The subject of the last video was fences under high voltage transmission lines. The north boundary of my property borders a 230 kilovolt transmission line and they have an easement across it. And I was informed by the power company while no trees or buildings were permitted within the easement, the fences were. So I made a video of a small fence I put up with just one wire to see what it would charge up to with just the fields radiating off the power lines. And a lot of people found that pretty interesting and just the comment section of that video is worth looking at. There's some fantastic stories and opinions about what goes on underneath high voltage power lines. The northwest corner of my property is, is just ahead by a guide wire before it gets to the neighbor's field. There's a turn in the power line right here it's going east and west and it turns and then it goes north. And my neighbor has a four strand barbed wire fence that runs all along the power line. It's made of steel posts, so it's gonna be grounded out about every 12 feet, I think. And I was wondering if that was a insulated electric fence, if that'd be building up a pretty good charge. What I did here is I ran a little wire right where the property line is to simulate a fence. It's not connected to anything. This is the west end of the wire. It's not connected to anything. It's just looped over. And the wire that I used for this simulated electric fence was just a 80 yard piece of coax cable that I had. And I just got it zip tied to the post. It's not in any way attached to any electric poles or anything. It's just hanging off the post. And now after reading a lot of the comments in there, I want to try a few more things while I have this up underneath these lines. Here's the other end of my wire. Here's my ground connected in my hand. And you can actually, this focus is in there, you can actually see some sparking going on just between the wire and the ground. What I have going now is my coax fence cable and my ground hooked up to a spark gap circuit. And I got a small ceramic disc capacitor, high voltage one, being charged up by the circuit and discharging over my little spark gap. And that spark gap is about 17 thousandths of an inch. So I can give you an idea approximately what the voltage would be. Um, probably it's less than a half a millimeter. So I'm, it's probably less than 1500 volts jumping across here. And this other capacitor I got is a, another high voltage ceramic disc capacitor. It's three nanofarads. And I can join it in parallel with this other one so it's a bigger jolt now intervals are longer but it's a bigger jolt now uh, it can be impressive but this like i said in the end of the last video it's just milliwatts of power and this is a lot safer than charging up that big capacitor I had before. I've gotten shocked by these little ones here and it hurts, but it's not gonna kill you, it's not lethal. This is kind of like what an electric fencer would do. Steady with the smaller capacitor and I could join in another one. Longer intervals, bigger jolt. In this little capacitor here, that's a one nanofarad, and this was the three one. And if I wanted to drop the voltage down, I would probably put it through an induction coil. I thought I had an ignition coil, but I couldn't find it, and I wasn't ready to build anything like that right now, so I'm just leaving it like this for now. Pretty interesting. I think that spark app is interfering with the camera phone a little bit. Well, it's after sunset, but it's still light enough to see. And I got four fluorescent tubes hooked up in the series off of my coax cable fence in the ground. 
and they're able to see it pretty good now on the phone. And now that it is dark enough, you can see the fluorescent tube I have in my hand under the power lines. Still got stuff glowing over there, but now I just got this right in my hand. I'm just on the edge of the easement now, but it's still glowing pretty good. Really, really bright right by my hand. I'm gonna keep going this way and see what happens. Still glowing. Still glowing. Like you're all glowing over there. Still glowing in my hand. And I am a about 20 feet this side of the easement now. It looks like it's getting dimmer. The top is getting dimmer. Just glowing by my hand. Dimmer, dimmer. Just about out. But it's quite a ways. Electrosmog is a term I guess people use to call it. I pulled out a different meter, it's a little more sensitive, it still doesn't have the high range. I have it just connected to the ground and just on the probe when I raise the probe up in the air, it'll pick up voltage. And if I actually just touch it with my fingers, it goes almost up to 70, 71 volts, it just in my bare hand even though I'm standing on the ground. <laughs> interesting but with a cord on the ground I got a 100 foot extension cord laid out on the ground all the way up to that one little tree and set it up here and I'm not actually getting anything it actually grounds it out a little bit more so cable on the ground doesn't do anything just grounds it out more kind of what I expected but I wanted to try it interesting that I'm charged up well I drove my pickup over here so it's parked underneath the lines just to see what kind of charge it pick up on this pick up on the pickup but actually not getting anything. It's very damp out. It could be that it's grounding out. Not getting much of a reading. But what I found that's real interesting, I laid a couple sticks on the, laid a couple sticks on the ground. And watch what happens when I hold the probe in my hand and step on the wood standing on the wood and I'm getting charged way up there now 161 volts going through me and I'm I was probably grounded out before when I checked it earlier well, that's pretty interesting my body is acting like an antenna 100 it was up to 170 there for a minute. Incredible. But my pickup, trying to find a place. Yeah, pickup must just be too wet. The tires must be wet or something. And it's grounding out. <laughs> but I can stand on this uh, wood and get a good reading off myself. Huh. See right now I'm standing on one foot and it went up to 190. <laughs> yeah I guess these boots are a little bit wet looks like. <laughs> 
when I seen that my body was uh, charged up so much standing on those pieces of wood, I went and got myself a piece of styrofoam to stand on to see what I'll be charged up when I stand on that. And I just got the ground stretched over. So I'm not even really underneath the power lines now. I'm actually right on the edge of the easement. And I'm going to stand on the styrofoam now and I'll see what I'm charged up to. So here we go. Get on the styrofoam. Get my meter lead over here. I'm going to wet my fingers a little bit. And then let's see, I'll get that meter. This you can see that? That's what I'm charged up to. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> That's just my body. And I'm not even underneath the power line. I'm off to the side, right on the edge of the easement. If I lower my arm a little bit, it goes down. This is just me holding it down here. And I raise my arm a little bit. It goes on up. <laughs> really, that's incredible. That's what's going through me. We just won't be in by these power lines. They're not even underneath them. They're just insulated good. I'm raising my arm again. And then make sure you can see the meter. That's about head height. My arm is about head height right now. <laughs> Bizarre. I don't know what the health effects would be from being under these transmission lines, but I know that any living thing crossing underneath them is going to have that charge running right through them. Especially if they're grounded, you know, like a deer walking across here. There's deer tracks all through here. But I know that the gophers avoid this, and it could be because of that electro smog. And I know in the comments of the other video, people say it can cause cancer, like leukemia in children. I don't know if that was a fact or not, but that's possible, I guess. I know what it's like to have leukemia. I'm in remission from it for 15 years now, so I know what it's like. But I know I wouldn't want to live underneath this just because it might be a risk. Now that I've seen that my body was getting electrified outside of the easement to about 250 volts from the electro smog, I think I'm going to pull out my apparatus here and move it to right along the easement and see what kind of charge I can pull in from there. And I'm also going to order myself a high voltage meter so I can get some better readings. So this will be the end of this video and I'll catch you in another one. Thanks for watching.